To say that Artemis and Aphrodite don't always get along would be something of an understatement. And it's hardly surprising from an analytical standpoint, they're symbolically antithetical to each other, one representing love, sex, and beauty, the other virginity and badassitude. But beyond their natural rivalry with each other, Aphrodite has specifically never been too keen on Artemis' hunters, mostly because of the whole no relationships thing. It's one thing for Artemis to be naturally contradictory to Aphrodite, but it's another thing entirely for mortals to choose Artemis over Aphrodite. And considering that this is a goddess who took the mere existence of a pretty girl personally, Aphrodite has an unsurprising tendency to be very petty when it comes to the Hunters of Artemis. Like Hippolytus, for instance. Never heard of him? That's not too surprising. He's not a big name hero like his father Theseus, or just a big name like his mother Hippolyta. Now Hippolytus has devoted himself to Artemis, choosing a life of hunting and no girlfriend over no hunting and yes girlfriend. This offends Aphrodite on principle, who reacts with about as much restraint as we've come to expect from her, and she resolves to ruin his life for having the audacity to not be into girls. So Aphrodite's flawless plan progresses thusly. First, she uses her goddess magic to make Hippolytus' stepmom Phaedra fall in love with him. This makes Phaedra totally love sick, and she tries to get Hippolytus to sleep with her, which he soundly refuses to do, because uh, and also uh, well, Phaedra doesn't take this very well, so she goes to Theseus and tells him that Hippolytus, um, forced himself on her. In some versions, she actually kills herself first, and her suicide note carries the accusation instead. Either way, Theseus is outraged and calls in a favor from his father Poseidon to have Hippolytus killed. Poseidon sends a sea monster to spook Hippolytus' horses, who subsequently drag him to his death. Now, that sucks. Obviously. But the story doesn't actually end here. See, Hippolytus was lucky enough to get his very own historical cult. And as far as the cult's personal headcanon was concerned, no way in hell was Artemis letting one of her hunters die for something so stupid. So Artemis calls in a favor from Asclepius, the doctor so good he could resurrect the dead. And makes him resurrect the dead, bringing Hippolytus back to life. Hooray! Now in this version, he also moves to Latium and becomes a Roman god Verbius, because syncretism. And I think one line in the Iliad makes it seem like he actually married someone? Which kinda feels like it subverts the whole premise of the story, really. And here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Jesus loves you more than you will know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. God bless you, please, Mrs. Robinson. Heaven holds a place for those who pray. Hey, hey, hey.